Thank you. Oh, hello, Julius. It's it's Robert here. How are you? Thank you very much for Good taking morning. my call. No worries. That's OK. <clears throat> I'm, I've been doing a lot of reading. Um, I had problems with my computer yesterday, so I think I've got to get it fixed. But um, uh, until then, I've been on the JW.org site. I go to a sort of cafe, pub, restaurant type place and they you buy a coffee. You can have unlimited refills and it's free Internet. So, uh, so I've been on the JW.org site. I've got some yeah. of your literature in paper form, but I, I'm a bit of a scanner. So I scan hundreds and hundreds of um, copies of your literature on the JW.org site. Um, several things I'm really curious about. I was wondering if you'd be able to help me. Yep. Far away. Um, well, one of them is Revelation, its grand climax at hand. Yeah. It's the end of chapter 22. It's page 148. And it seems to say something quite insulting about Christendom's clergy. It says, rather than announce the incoming kingdom of God, Christendom's clergy have chosen to remain with Satan's world. And um, the kingdom of God, they say, uh, on the previous page, um, was announced from 1922 onwards in a series of com uh, conferences, Jehovah's Witness, com well, they were called Bible students at the time, Bible student conferences in the 1920s. These were the trumpets of the book of Revelation. And they say the um, fifth trumpet of the book of Revelation happened in the year 1926 at the Royal Albert Hall in London, when Judge Rutherford gave a speech there in London in 1926, and he released the book Deliverance. Yeah, I'm listening. Um, well, it, it says Christendom's clergy have chosen to remain with Satan's world. Are, are you saying that every clergy, all the clergy and all the denominations are part of Satan's world or just some of them? Um, so that's a very specific question. I need to just have a look at the material and come yes. back. Yes, of course. The condemnation of clergy. Yes. Uh, is it all of them or some of them? Yes, you can get back to me, of course, of course. Yeah, um, that's fine. I mean, that same paragraph, paragraph 20, it goes on to say that Jesus Christ is the angel of the abyss called Apollyon. And I, I found out looking at um, one of your earlier books, The Finnish Mystery or Studies in the Scripture, Volume 7. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah, that's a very old publication, but yeah, carry on. Sorry, yeah. let me just, the Revelation chapter 22, the first paragraph was paragraph 14, was it? No, it's paragraph 20. No, the, the so paragraph 20, the both points you're referring to are in paragraph 20. Paragraph 20 says Christendom's clergy have chosen to remain with Satan's world. Yeah, OK, not it. And yeah. I'm saying, does that mean that every single clergyman and every single religion is of the devil? Is that what the book yeah. is saying or is yeah. it saying something else? And you have to look through the, the previous couple of pages and also from um, a few pages onwards to find out that the seventh trumpet of the book of Revelation uh, yeah. happened in 19... Uh, let me find it here. It's page 173, I think. Yes, 173 says the fifth trumpet of the book of Revelation happened in London, England. And that was at the Royal Albert Hall in 1926 when Judge Rutherford gave uh, a speech. Yeah. And he released the book Deliverance. They say that's the seventh, that's the fifth trumpet of the book of Revelation. And I just found that a little difficult to accept that the seven okay. trumpets of the book of Revelation happened in the 1920s. So it's a couple of pages before 148 and page 173. One, okay, 148 and 173. Um, it certainly is a very interesting book, but going back to page 148, the next question is that it says that Apollyon is Jesus Christ who comes up out of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. So this is commenting on the fifth trumpet of the book of Revelation. And it's saying that um, Apollyon, now I've got the Finnish mystery, and it says that um, Apollyon is the devil on page 159. Okay. And just about every Catholic, Protestant, and Russian and Greek Orthodox church, just about everyone in church history, 
would agree that Apollyon is either Satan himself or one of his chief demons. And the Watchtower agreed with that. In 1917, when they pu published the Finnish mystery, they said, yes, Apollyon is the devil, Satan the devil. Um, okay. But here they're saying on page 148 that Apollyon is Jesus Christ. It's kind of an about turn. It's the biggest U-turn okay. in religious history, I think, to say that Apollyon is the devil and then to turn around and 60 years later, 70 years later, say, no, no, Apollyon isn't the devil. Apollyon is Jesus Christ. OK, I'll come back to you on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the book also talks about the John class. Now, I think the John class are either the anointed who are in heaven or the anointed who are on earth or Jehovah's Witnesses who are on earth, anointed and non-anointed. I'm not too sure what the John class is. It mentions the John class, for instance, on page 144, paragraph 8. Um, so that's the next question. Um, and I, I guess um, the, the final question wouldn't be the Revelation book, but when I read the book, um, um, What Can the Bible Teach Us? It, it talks yeah. about, and I've also looked at the Insight on the Scriptures book on jw.org. I have problems with two things. Jesus' resurrection, because I believe he rose up in the same body he died in. I don't believe okay. Jesus rose up as a spirit creature. I think he rose up in the same physical body that he died in. Um, and the next thing would be the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit a person or is the Holy Spirit um, an impersonal it, like electricity, which I've read on your jw.org site? You know, I mean, the Holy Spirit can be grieved, for instance, in Isaiah 63.10. Now, how can you grieve electricity? How can you grieve something impersonal like electricity or a rock or a piece of mud? You, you can't grieve electricity. It doesn't have any emotion. The Bible talks about the love of the Spirit. Um, that's Romans 15.30. So if the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force like electricity, how can, how can the Holy Spirit love? So I found that rather confusing. And looking at your literature, your literature says that the father is a spirit and he's a person, doesn't it? Yeah? I'm, so I'm just um, writing you the questions you're asking. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just making a summary now. Your, your literature says the father is a person and he's a spirit. Uh, the son, you claim Rose as a spirit creature. And he's a person. You claim that um, the angels in heaven, like Gabriel, they're angels, they're spirits, but they're persons. You claim that Satan is a spirit. He's a person. You claim the demons are spirits and they're persons. But it seems a bit inconsistent to say with everyone, the father, the son, Satan, the angels, the demons, to say that all of these are spirits and they're all persons. But when you get to the Holy Spirit, you say the Holy Spirit is a spirit and he's not a person. I just find that a bit confusing. OK. Yeah, OK. And with, re it. and with regard to Jesus's resurrection, I guess this would be the last point. Um, John two nineteen to twenty one tw nineteen to twenty two and John ten seventeen both seem to state that Jesus is saying he's going to rise up in the same body that he died in. Um, so John chapter two verse nineteen. Do you mind if I read it, please, Julius? Uh, no, not at this point. I'm trying to just make your notes. I'm okay. going to get your points you're making i'll come back to you on those so you said john 2 17 yeah. and it, the other one? john 2 verse 19 to verse 22 especially verse 21 it okay. says destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up and temple is an idiomatic phrase for his body 
in verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. So he's clearly saying that he's going to rise from the dead in the same body that he, he died in. And he's going to raise his body from the, from the grave. And of course, John 10, 17 says the same thing. So I was very puzzled about why you claim, why do you claim that Jesus rose as a spirit? Anything else? Um, that's 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 most of it, really. Um, thank you very much for your help and your time. No worries. Um, so let me just summarise the points you've made. Um, first one, Revelation twenty-two, chapter twenty-two, paragraph uh, twenty, condemnation of clergy. Is it all of them or some of them? Um, sorry, uh, sorry. It's that was no, that was. That was the Revelation book, chapter 22, and that was page 148, paragraph 20. Yes. Christendom's clergy have chosen to remain with Satan's world. Yes. So you see, the question was, um, is it in terms of the condemnation of the clergy, is it um, all of them or some of them? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, then the second one was the seventh plague. Um, according to the uh, of the publications, it happened in 1926. That's the fifth fifth trumpet of the Book of Revelation, happened in 1925, 1926 at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Yeah. So that's what you're querying about yes. that. Yes. Yes. And then identify Napoleon is the Jesus or the devil. Yes. yes. The other one was the identity of the John class. Yes. Um, and then it, Jesus resurrected in the same body, John 2.19, and then 19.22, uh, and then John 10.17. Yes. And then the other point was, how can the Holy Spirit be grieved? Is it a no. person? Yes, that's is right. It? Is the Holy Spirit a, an it, an impersonal yes. thing, or is the Holy Spirit yes. a he, a personal being? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was those were your thoughts there. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Just gonna dive to make sure. Have I missed anything else? Um, well, um, the Watchtower has had involvement with um, warfare in the past, and I'm rather puzzled by that. Um, why you've been involved in politics and and warfare in the past? Because, looking at your book, what can the Bible teach us? Page one hundred and fifty nine lists six things that followers of Jehovah should do and point five is don't get involved in politics that's page yeah. 159 yeah and um, I noticed that Judge Rutherford in the First World War publicized the purchase of Liberty bonds or Liberty loans to support the American military in the First World War that was in the Watchtower for the 15th of May 1918 and I believe the page number from memory is 6,257 of the reprints. So he, he wrote saying um, Bible students should buy Liberty bonds or Liberty loans to support the American military in the First World War. And he, he talked about tabernacle workers clubbing together and giving 25% of their meager income to buy a single Liberty bond between them. And rich, rich Bible students, of course, buying several bonds. Okay. Um, and then in 1947, there's a watchtower for the 1st of June. I think it's page 197, but I could have got that wrong. Uh, I can't use my laptop at the moment. It needs to be fixed. Um, it talks about the situation on Australia in the Second World War. So this is a 1947 watchtower. It's two years after the end of the war. But um, it talks about people going on Bethel service at the Watchtower headquarters and being sent out to work in uh, military canteens, serving soldiers in military canteens, obviously on military bases, and also working in armaments factories producing instruments of war. I thought Jehovah's Witnesses were um, supposed to be neutral in war, but this Watchtower admits that they were actually producing um, military equipment. And I found out that this was at the Taylor Craft Aircraft Corporation. Mr. Taylor was a Jehovah's Witness 
and his brother died in 1928 testing a new plane called a Chummy. So Mr. Taylor ran the corporation until his death in 1988. Uh, he was quite old. He was 90 when he died, or roughly 90. And um, in the Second World War, he did what, of course, many Jehovah's Witnesses do who own window cleaning companies. Mr. Taylor, who was a Jehovah's Witness, employed Je other Jehovah's Witnesses to work for him in his factory. And during the Second World War, Taylor Craft Aircraft Corporation switched 100% over to producing military aircraft for the Australian military. So this watchtower admits that Jehovah's Witnesses were producing, quote, um, instruments of war. So I was just puzzled about that. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I've given you a, a lot of information, Jules. Ju yeah. ju sorry, ju sorry, Julius. Um, yeah. The best thing to do is for you to text me when you're going to ring. I can speak most mornings and most evenings after 7.30. It's best just to text me the time you're going to be calling. Yeah. Sometimes I don't have credit on this phone. So I can't, no, I can't text you back and negotiate with you if I've got no credit. It's best for you just to text me the time. If I have credit and it's not convenient, I'll text you back. Otherwise, so I'll do my best. Credit, I'm happy to call you if you don't have credit. Yes. But what I'm saying is uh, I can't always reply yes. by, yes, by text. And absolutely no links on this phone. This is a G3 phone. So uh, absolutely no links whatsoever. Um, I'm afraid I'm a little old, so I'm used to speaking on the phone. And, uh, that's fine. <laughs> anything else like this WhatsApp, whatever that is, I don't know what it is, but anything like that, you're talking over my head. I just speak on the phone. Um, okay, that's fine. It's certainly very interesting, your literature, and I've, I found it totally, totally fascinating. Um, mm. It's quite a big field to look into, though, isn't it? Religion is, the Bible is quite a big topic, and there's an awful lot of points mm. to cover. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for your time and uh, your research, um, and I'll, I'll come back to you. Okay, thank you, Julius. Thanks, Robert. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Take care. Bye.